Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here at the Rock Island Auction House today checking out some of the cool guns that are coming up for sale in their June of 2015 regional auction. And you know, I've looked at enough guns out there that I've kind of come to the conclusion that there really isn't anything new. Anytime someone comes out with something that's ostensibly new or innovative, chances are it's been done by someone before. And it's, we just have too many guns out there for there to be a whole lot of ideas left to find without some fundamental change. Well, one really good example of this, I think, is the popularity today of pistol versions of rifles. So AK pistols and AR pistols and even some of the other guns out there. The SIG 556 is offered as a pistol. Uh, this isn't a new idea. I don't know that anyone's actually marketing it as a new idea, but you know what? It's been out there for many, many decades now. And I have two guns here that are direct evidence of that. These are both Enforcer M1 carbines. This is not a military, an actual Ill issue military weapon. These were all done on a commercial basis. And there are several different companies that made commercial sale M1 carbines that offered these as a, a model that you could just buy brand new. So there are a couple differences. Um, for example, this guy is, was made by Ivor Johnson and it actually uses surplus GI M1 carbine parts. Because for a long time, there were a lot of those on the market. And of course, if you're making the guns, it's a lot cheaper to buy existing surplus parts than to make your own. However, eventually the surplus parts will inevitably dry up. That happened when uh, the Universal Firearms Company was making M1 carbines. So they started to manufacture all of their own components, uh, ultimately right down to their own new cast receivers. So when they redesigned the parts, they kind of changed some of them. So that gives us an interesting little bit of mechanical variation we can look at between these two guns. I do want to say uh, these were ostensibly introduced as military or police weapons. Uh, that was theoretically the market that these companies were going for, and I think that's kind of ludicrous. Anyone who's fired something like an AR or an AK pistol offhand knows that they're thoroughly impractical guns. They're, they're there to have fun with, and that's pretty much it. Same goes for these. Uh, in particular, this original GI peep sight, when you uh, actually hold this gun out at arm's length, the front sight is in fact larger than the hole in the peep sight, making it effectively impossible to actually aim. So why don't I bring the camera back here and let me sh at least show you the difference between the GI carbines and some of the universal carbines. So first thing I want to point out real quickly is that we do have some variation in barrel lengths. When different companies made these guns, or the same company made different models of them, they did adjust the length of the barrels. So you got between eight, like eight and 11 inches of barrel, depending on which type you get. And as you can see, the grip style, the grip style varies as well. This one's nice and contoured, whereas this one is a bit blockier. Now, moving on, I mentioned that the rear peep sight on this military model uh, pretty much was completely filled by the front blade when you held it at arm's length. Well, for that reason, I think, when Universal uh, went to make their version of the Enforcer here, they actually replaced that rear sight with something much more akin to a typical uh, pistol notch sight. Of course, that's also far cheaper for them to make. I'm sure that was a factor as well. But this one, despite being Longer, a little heavier, I don't find the grip quite as comfortable. You can, however, actually aim it because of that sight, and that's definitely a bonus to some extent. Now, the military version of these guns obviously used existing military surplus parts. You can tell this at a glance easily because the side of this uh, operating rod is fully enclosed. You can't see the locking lug in there. You also have a little button here on top that allows you to lock the slide open, pull it back, push the button in, and voila, slide locks open. When Universal started making their own parts from the ground up, they figured they'd find a cheaper way to do this. So instead of having a cast and then machined component for this operating rod, they decided to make it out of stamped sheet metal. Now it's fairly heavy gauge sheet metal, but they did make this as a flat part and then they bent this piece over and they bent the handle tab out and then this is welded to the block that actually attaches down to the gas piston. So because it's sheet metal, um, they just left this lug opening fully open. So the easy way to identify these is that you can actually see the bolt lug 
right there through the side. Now, of course, because it is sheet metal, there's no way for them to put that button into it. So what they did instead was add in this little locking open lever. So to lock open a universal, pull the bolt back, push that lever forward, and there you go. If we were to look inside these guns, you would notice that the Ivor Johnson here with its GI parts has a single recoil spring in it, where the Universal, one of the other changes they made, which is, it's debatable whether or not they did a good job of making the change, but it was certainly a change that I think had a lot of potential. They replaced the single spring with a pair of dual recoil springs. So you'll see a lot of debate amongst owners. Some people have had flawless experiences with both brands of these guns. Some people have had horrible QC experiences. Uh, the one thing we can say for sure is that as an overall pattern, uh, the quality control and the reliability of commercial M1 carbines wasn't up to the par of the original military ones. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And frankly, you know, I hope people don't always take uh, the firearms industry too seriously. Not every gun out there has to have a you know, a hardcore military or self-defense purpose. Sometimes they're, they're just guilty good fun to shoot. And frankly, one of these enforcer carbines would be exactly that. It's, it's a guilty pleasure. You might be embarrassed to tell people that you like shooting these, but you know what? Yeah, I bet it'd be fun to, to blow off some rounds with one of these guys. So if you would like to do that, you have the opportunity. Both of these, of course, are coming up for sale, this being an auction house and all. So if you look at the link in the description text below, I have uh, actually two links, one to the lots for each of these Enforcer carbines. You can check them out. If you decide that you know, it really is something that ought to be in your own house, well, you can place a bid online, and best of luck to you in uh, trying to win them. So thanks for watching.